Hey everyone and welcome back. So today's video is going to be a recommendations video. It is Black History Month in the UK so I thought it would be apt to recommend some books from black British authors. Um, I'm quite late in doing this, I realise that it's probably, this is probably going to go up in the middle of the month, but hey ho. Um, also apologies for the lack of videos overall, I'm just trying to settle into a rhythm and just balance and juggle things and sometimes videos get filmed and sometimes they don't. But yeah, I thought I would split this video up into two sort of sections. So I'm going to recommend some books and authors that I have read um, and that I know and love, like love their books, and then some authors or books that I haven't read but I think would still be a good read for Black History Month and of course any other month of the year, but you know why we're doing this. The first book I'm going to speak about is actually a book that I haven't spoken about on my channel. I read it back in July and I don't know, I got to the end of July and I just decided <laughs> I wasn't going to film a video about half the books that I'd read that month. Um, but the book that I'm referring to is Taking Up Space, The Black Girls Manifesto for Change by Chelsea and Ore. Um, this book is published under the Penguin imprint Murky Book, so um, the imprint that Stormzy created. Um, I think this is actually the first book that they published under that imprint, I could be wrong. The reason I picked this book as one of my first picks for Black History Month and these recommendations is because Chelsea and Ore um, are two graduates from Cambridge um, and they've written this book essentially as a little bit of a manifesto of a black girl's guide to surviving time at Cambridge but also talking about the issues that they face whilst they're at Cambridge so this ranges from things to do with um, the things that they study so there's a hashtag called Academia So White. Academia So White refers to the fact that a lot of the study and a lot of the references you do are based around like old white men basically um, and but it ranges from obviously things to do with academia to what it was like just socialising in Cambridge and things like that um, and how they were treated, what it was like dating, just what it was like making friends um, and I just thought it was an excellent book. They both seem to have written it when they were both in like I think their final year at Cambridge um, and they also talk about you know what it was like sort of getting into Cambridge and doing that application process and I just thought it was a really insightful book there was a lot of it that I could relate to and I went to a uni that was completely diverse like I went to a uni in Birmingham and they mentioned in the book that you know it's so different being in London which is of course where I grew up where you come from somewhere that is so diverse that you just kind of think that everywhere is like that um, and then like a lot of people move to like maybe Manchester or Birmingham and they're very diverse places as well um, so it's very different obviously moving to somewhere like Cambridge where it's, that's not the case. Um, and I just thought this was an excellent book, um, it was well written, the chapters that it was split into were just really powerful chapters and I just think they executed their message so well um, and I definitely think for anyone who's considering going to university but probably going to Cambridge or Oxford this would be an excellent read. Another book that I'm going to mention is Don't Touch My Hair by Emma Dabari. Emma grew up in Ireland. Um, why do I think she was adopted? I, don't, I keep saying random things on videos and then they turn out not to be true, so don't quote me on that. Um, and just for reference, I think Ore and Chelsea, one of them is Ghanaian and one of them is Nigerian, um, but both born in the UK. So yeah, um, I know Emma is Irish for a fact, um, and she is mixed race, and she wrote this book about um, Afro hair, um, essentially her hair type with it being 4C and there's a little bit in there about what it's like being mixed race and having 4C hair because I think the what we're used to is seeing mixed race girls with like sort of that middle bit where it's curly hair and very loose waves. Um, but she's written this whole book that is just more than about <laughs> uh, mixed race girls. Emma manages to encapsulate so much in this book. This book just contains so much knowledge. Um, a lot of it talks about um, Afro hair in America, sort of what hair was like when people were in African countries and sort of how that developed when they were brought over to um, America to be slaves and then there's just sort of the talk of the rise of styling hair but also moving towards weave in America and just sort of how black hair was spoken about um, and how sort of the traditional hairstyles were lost um, to like present day when she's talking about how we see um, natural hair within the Afro community. The book is so interesting in terms of seeing how, I guess, African hair has been sort of scrutinised throughout the years and how we are where we are. And um, there's a particular chapter in there that was my favourite, which was to do with the um, mass and sort of the intricacies of some of the hairstyles um, that are done in Africa and how they relate to mass. Yeah, this book is so brilliant. It's so brilliant for if you just want to take a look at how African hair is politicised. It includes things like, um, 
the girl in South Africa that was sort of kicked out of, sc of school for wearing her hair out naturally. Like, it just includes loads of snippets of things like that, and I just thought it was absolutely brilliant. And I think it was re either released this year or last year, so it's a very current. So I guess if we move away from the non-fiction titles, I will move into fiction. I recommend a book that I thoroughly enjoyed because I listened to it on audiobook, and again, I have spoken about this, but this book is My Sister the Serial Killer um, by Onyinke Braithwaite. Probably saying that really wrong. Um, Onyinke? or Yin Kan, sorry, is a Nigerian-British author um, and I'm pretty sure this book was released this year, oh, last year, it's very recent anyway, it's a very recent release um, and I don't know if I read the book if I would really enjoy this but listening to the book it was a, such a good experience. This book is, as the title says, um, it's from the perspective of our narrator who is the sister of a serial killer and she's explaining to us that her sister keeps killing her boyfriends and she's sort of explaining why um, and we sort of focus on I guess maybe a week and month in their life and sort of the following of her sister with another man and I guess the incident that occurs there and sort of I don't know what leads up to these moments that ends up with her sister killing her partners. Um, it's a very entertaining book. I did personally find that there was a lot of growth in the book, like I felt like the book stayed very stagnant but it was still very entertaining especially in the audiobook format um, and I think if you're looking for a like, sort of light um, but engaging read then this is good. It's good because whilst it's a thriller um, you're not sort of waiting for the who done it part, you already know who done it, you're just sort of um, embroiled in the why and sort of what's going to happen next in this actual situation that we're looking at and there's a few twists and turns in there in terms of um, who the sister chooses to confide in but yeah it's not a case of who done it you already know who the murderer is but I thought it was a really enjoyable book and yes of course if I'm going to recommend it in a format it is going to be the audiobook format that is because it is narrated by someone I can't remember her name now but I will put it across the screen because I thought she was absolutely brilliant but she narrates it in a Nigerian accent so you really get to feel the vibe of you know how the book should be read and like what the people's voices sound like so I thought that was just really engaging. Another person I would like to recommend and this is in the realm of poetry is Yissa Daily Ward. Um, I would like to recommend both of her poetry collections so Bone and The Terrible. Again I feel like The Terrible is a book that came out last year and it definitely wasn't this year. Or could it have been this year? I don't know. No it was definitely last year um, because I went to a talk that she did um, and Yisa writes poetry so if you're into poetry this will be great. The Terrible is her memoir so it's part poetry collection part memoir so if you're not into poetry I'd probably recommend that but Bone is the first poetry collection that she released and it's absolutely stunning. Um, Yisa writes mainly about herself so the themes that you'll sort of find in her poetry are to do with sort of like um, depression, sex or sex work. Um, she grew up in a religious household so one of the other things you'll find is she talks about sort of being separated from her parents and living with her grandparents who were super religious and they were seventh day adventists or something like that it's knocking around in my head um but something like that so she sort of deals with the separation of not never knowing her dad um being away from her mum also living with really religious grandparents and then also the religious element there um, and sort of what her relationship with her brother was like. So there's a lot of like dark themes in there because her childhood wasn't full of happy experiences per se. Um, so she writes about all of that and I think she does it wonderfully. Um, and she also of course writes about love and sort of I guess the really darker elements of love when it comes to relationships. So yeah, I am a huge fan of Yessa. I just really, really love her stuff. I like to re go back and reread Bone at least like once a year since I read it. Um, so yeah, I think it's overdue for me to read Bone, but yes, if I could recommend someone to do with poetry, it would definitely be her. She grew up in, I want to say like Sunderland but I could be wrong but sort of around that sort of Manchester I don't know north of London area <laughs> displaying my absolute ignorance here um but yeah she is absolutely brilliant so this is where I'm going to move on to talk about books that I haven't actually read but I think may be useful and at least good for Black History Month so the first book is going to be this which is Slate in Your Lane the Black Girl Bible I think this book is going to be similar in the vein of taking up space um this is by Yomi Adegoke and Elizabeth like UVBNA. Um, I think these are both Nigerian women and I think this is going to be similar in the vein of um, yeah taking up space I've already said that so great <laughs> um, but I'm going to read this I'm going to start this this month of course um, because it was on my list to start it this month anyway and then I also realized it was Black History Month so why not this book is essentially them interviewing um, some really important like black British women in 
Putin. Yes, Sandra, that's what happened. Uh, and these are women who are in like sort of the top of their career and it's like they're in really varied fields. So like BBC presenters, um, I don't know, some of them probably work for tech companies, some of them probably work for like consulting companies. So it's kind of varied in that sense. Um, actually, there are pictures of the authors, the authors, the women they interview in here. Actually, it doesn't say what they do though. And some of them are MBEs, um, some of them are doctors. So it's just basically asking them, I guess, how they got to their field and sort of what obstacles they faced in getting there. And yeah, I'm excited to read this. The next book I'm going to speak about is Back to Black, Retelling Radicalism for the 21st Century by Kiende Andrews. Um, I'm holding up two copies because I was kindly sent this by the author, so the author, the publisher. Um, and yeah, they sent me two copies. I can't re really decide which one I like best. I really like this one, I think. This is the one I like best. But anyway, I feel like the title sounds a bit like, whoa, but um, I am going to recommend this. And another book has just popped into my head and I'm just like, how haven't you put that book on your recommendations? And I'm just going to speak on it in a second. Back to Black traces a long and imminent history of black radical politics. Worn out of resistance to slavery and colonialism, its rich past encompasses figures such as Marcus Garvey, Angela Davis, the Black Panthers, and the Black Lives Matter, Matter activists of today. At its core, it argues that racism is embedded in the fabric of society and that it can never be overcome unless by enacting change outside of this suffocating system. Yet this black radicalism has been diluted and moderated over time, willfully misrepresented and caricatured by others, divested of its legacy, potency and force. Kiende Andrews explores the true roots of this tradition and connects the dots to today's struggles by showing what a renewed politics of black radicalism might look like in the 21st century. How interesting! So yeah, I'm intrigued to read this. Um, I don't think I've ever read anything like this. The only thing I can think of that is maybe a little bit similar to this is why I'm no longer talking to black, white people about race. I was gonna say black people. Um, and that's the book that I was thinking of when I was like, why didn't I put that on my list? So yeah, um, excited to read this. Again, I'm gonna try and get to, the, to this this month. I have like a little mini TBR that I have set myself for this month, but I think I'm gonna swap one of the books out for this. But yes, um, before I go on to recommend the last a book. I will quickly slip in Why No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge. Um, I'm sure everyone has heard of this book at this point, um, but of course it's a huge staple um, in terms of um, something being written by a black British author for non-fiction um, and it is a stunning, stunning um, work, piece of work. Um, Rennie writes about um, Britain's history with racist energy um, and how we've got a long way to go and I think maybe for people reading this outside of the UK they might be like what in the UK I feel like education is really heavily focused on the slave trade and America's history with slavery um, and we never really talk about the history that Britain has with slavery and sort of you know what happened when Britain encouraged soldiers from um, Africa and from India to come over to the UK and what they were promised and things like that. That is just never ever spoken about. It's like it just doesn't happen. It's just like all these people from different countries just ended up in the UK and we don't know how. Um, and this is basically what Red Egg works to sort of I'm say unlodge um, and sort of inform the reader of. It's a very very fascinating read. The title Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race is her basically saying she doesn't want to spend her time fighting up against people who basically want her to keep explaining to them um, sort of history and context and all these things about race. She wants to help sort of dismantle um, like institutional racism and all those sorts of things but she is really bloody tired of having to like explain to people really basic things because that stops her from like sort of breaking down the barriers um, and I think it's just really interesting. The final book I'm going to speak about is actually an anthology and again I have not read this but I do want to read it and it's called Daughters of Africa. Um, it is, I think it features about over 200 writers but it is edited by Margaret Busby and I'm pretty sure she owns a publishing house in the UK. This anthology is a collection of short stories from African diaspora, so it will feature, I think, a range of um, authors. So some may be British, some may not be, um, but it still falls into this sort of recommendation video. I haven't read it yet, so I don't know, like, the themes and things like that, but I think with it having over like 200 authors contributing, the themes are going to be large, so we're going to expect everything. But I think obviously one of the huge themes is that it's based around Africa and that obviously these are African diaspora authors. 
Um, so yeah, I'd just like to slip that in there as a recommendation even though I haven't read it. Probably try and get to it next year. Sorry, a quick thing that I'm going to slip into here because I kept saying to myself, don't forget Sandra, but I didn't write it on my list so of course I forget. It's Red Dust Road by Jackie Kay. I recently read that so I'm not going to ramble on about it and I'll just link you to the video that I did up here. Um, but Jackie Kay is a Scottish author of Nigerian descent and this book, Red Dust Road, is her memoir, her memoir of sort of tracking down her real parents because she was adopted and she just talks about what life was like for her growing up in Glasgow um, and, sort of, and sort of what it was like finding her birth parents and was it was it what she expected, how did her adoptive parents react, her, you know, her mum and dad um, and it was a fantastic read. But yeah, that is it for this video. I hope that was helpful. I just thought it would be a shame if I didn't talk about many of the Black British authors that I have read and loved. Um, there's probably some that, like, there is a couple that I wanted to feature in this video, but I know I didn't actually like those books, so I don't know. I thought it would be a bit disingenuous of me to mention them, <laughs> um, even though it would probably be good to, like, boost them, but, you know. I don't have a million followers so it's fine um but yeah thank you so much for watching this video please let me know if you are thinking about checking out any of the books that i've mentioned because i'd be happy to talk to you about them and i'll catch you in my next video bye